What are you doing? Crypto, bro. Oh, okay. This is like the new gluten-free, right? It's not, it's not the new gluten-free. It's just this new thing everyone's doing that, that no one fully understands yet. Right. That's like exactly what I meant. If nobody understands it, why are you getting into it? Oh, no, no, no. I understand it. Oh, you get it? Yeah, no, I totally get it. Okay, so then what is it? Well, it's basically, it's this website mm -hmm. with all these letter combinations, and you just kind of choose a combination that you like, right. put a bunch of money in, and then when you take it out, there's more money. So it's like gambling. Dude, it could not be further away from gambling. It's literally, it's nothing. Oh, shit, Ripple's down. What does that mean? XRP, bro. You want to make $1,000 right now? I mean, yes. Hand me your phone right now. Hand me your phone right now. Are you, are you, you sure? I'll, I'll make you a grand right now. Okay, but like, don't put like a lot of money in, because I'm, no, I'm not at all. Not at all. start slow. Uh-huh. Build it up. Bam. You're in for 3K. $3,000? Yeah. Of my money? Yeah. You just put it... That's a lot of money. Now, I know it sounds like a lot of money, but this 3K by tomorrow will be at least 4K. And that's not even taken into account... Oh, shit. What? Oh, shit. What? What just happened? Hello? Yeah, no, I'm seeing it. Yeah, no, it's bad. It's bad. Christian just put in 3K. So, now... We gotta sell. No, 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 no. You saying we gotta sell? Isn't it like volatile? We should right wait. Now. We should wait till right, it goes cool. back up. I'm selling. All right, sold. Whew. Got out of there quick. So, so what happened? Like, how much? Where's the money at? Uh, you got about a thousand. I made a thousand dollars. No, no, you got about a thousand dollars left. You just lost two thousand dollars in sixty seconds. Yeah, but what I can do right now is I can take that remaining thousand. I can put that into another coin. I can put that into uh, maybe LMK. No. Uh, SMH is looking good. J-I-M coin. J-I-M coin. Uh -huh. Jim coin. Yeah, it's my new coin. It's only at three cents right now. Great time to get in. You said you were going to make me a grand. Well, yeah, but you never really know with this kind of thing. I mean, it's all, it's like gambling. You never really know for sure. Then why did you sound so confident, bro? Well, otherwise, you wouldn't have bought in. That would have been a preferable option now. You okay? You seem stressed. I'm fucking, I'm stressed. I'm stressing. You just lost 2,000 of my dollars that quickly. Well, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Mine it all back for you? You want me to set up a bunch of servers and reroute a power line so that we have enough power to mine some coins? I mean, what do you want me to do? Fucking set up a pump and dump? Market, market cap a, a blockchain? I mean, I, what, is, what do any of these words, what are, these, are these real words? I don't know, okay? I don't know what any of this shit means, dude. All I know is that I'm down fucking $80,000 right $80, now. $80,000? I'm in so fucking deep, Christian. I'm in deep, man. Welcome, Bitcoin friends. It's Bitcoin Mamo. Today, we're going to look at the Bitcoin charts. We'll do some TA look at various time frames, also take a look at market cipher. But let's get straight into it. I want to start here on the two week chart. We do have this parallel channel drawn in blue here, just connecting the overall highs. And we can see it taking it to the previous low here that we did also come down to touch that line on this parallel channel at 33,000 and got that bounce back to 38,000. We did also close the two week above the 0.5 Fib level when looking at the Fib retracement from the bottom of the stock market crash low to the all time high. For the time being, we are holding that 0.5 Fib level. Also have these order blocks drawn in the blue. These are areas of supply and demand. You can draw them from a red candle in an uptrend or a green candle in a downtrend like this green candle, which is actually inside this order block. But these are areas of supply and demand, and they become of interest later on when we interact with those levels. They can act as support or resistance. We can see once we closed below this two-week order block, we moved all the way down to the next two-week order block, and we wicked pretty much to the bottom of that order block. We are still closing two-week candles above this two-week order block. I think if we close inside this order block, we might spend a bit more time here like we did on this previous occasion. But if we are able to stay above this order block with these two week candles, perhaps we could look for a bounce from this 0.5 level. Do also have one more trend line and that's just connecting the overall lows here. And we can see that interacts with the golden pocket area around the end of February. Golden pocket is at around 28,800 to 26,700. And down to the weekly time frame, we did also just open a weekly candle here. All these lines are the same as the two-week chart and the FIB levels. And these yellow order blocks here are the two-week order blocks we spoke about. The blue ones are the weekly order blocks. We can see from this green candle in a downtrend, this green candle in a downtrend, and this green candle in a downtrend. 
but we have closed several candles above this weekly order block and it is holding as support for the time being. The next order block higher up is at around 42,000. We do also have this falling wedge pattern here, but we will look at that in more detail on the daily time frame. And just pulling up the weekly EMA ribbon, I do still think we're in a bear market as long as we're below this ribbon. And the only way I would change my mind on that is if we open and close a weekly candle above the top of this ribbon, which is currently at 47,000. Even though I think we're in a bear market, doesn't mean we can't have decent bounces into that ribbon. And I do think we will see that eventually, possibly sometime this month. Looking at the stochastic RSI, we are still pretty much around a 5 reading. Would need to get back above this 20 level where this dotted line is to get some confidence on a push higher. Looking at the RSI, we do still have these lower lows on the RSI. And currently we are still making higher lows on the price action at those same points. So this is still potential hidden bullish divergence. But I would need to see Bitcoin get back above this red candle above 43,000 for that to be confirmed. And that hidden bullish divergence will remain in play as long as we're closing weekly candles above 32,000. And pulling up the VPVR, the amount of volume traded at certain price levels, we can see we are in this cluster at the moment between around 31,000 and 40,000. And that volume comes from the previous price action here. Bitcoin would need to get back above around 40k, get above this cluster of volume, and then there isn't much price action between there and 46,000. So I would think Bitcoin would move quite quickly from 41 to 46 if we do see Bitcoin break this falling wedge pattern and attempt to move higher. On the bearish side, we do see the VPVR drop off quite a lot below 31. And the next spike is all the way down here at around 24,000. And down to the daily time frame now. And we're going to look at this falling wedge in a bit more detail. This is a bullish pattern. We do see we have two touches on the top side, two touches on the bottom side. Quite often we break on the third touch to the upside. We can see we did come up to this line, pretty much touched it. We have had this rejection here. If we do pull up the EMA ribbon on the daily, we can see also that the bottom of the EMA ribbon did reject the price action at that same point. And we saw that with the previous price action here. We came up here, touched the ribbon, got a strong rejection. And on this other occasion, we did push into the ribbon a little bit. So there is that resistance up above here. Also looking at these daily order blocks, these yellow ones are the weekly order blocks, the green the two week. But just looking at the daily order blocks now, you can see we have been moving to the upside. We came to the top of this order block. And we did get this rejection. And at the moment, this daily candle is below both of these order blocks, but the daily candle hasn't closed yet. We'll have to see if we do close above this order block, which is at 37,700, or if we're going to come down to test the bottom of these order blocks to look for support. And we can just play it level by level with these order blocks. Personally, I would like to see us come down here. As I've got this white line drawn here, I'd like to see Bitcoin come down and actually make a lower low compared to the previous low, looking at the candle body closes, which was at 35,000. And if we were to do that, we could possibly make some bullish divergence when looking at the RSI down here. If we were to come down here, we make a higher low on the RSI compared to the previous low but make lower lows on the price action. That would be bullish divergence. It would give me a lot of confidence that we are going to break this falling wedge and I would start entering long trades down here. The other thing is the stochastic RSI here. It is quite high, came all the way up to 100 reading. And I do think this needs to cool off first before we get the fuel to push back up and break this falling wedge pattern. But one thing to note on the bull side is looking at the RSI, we do have a line connecting the tops here and the bottom. I am taking it from this point and not the highest point because it does match up with the price action when drawing these trend lines. 
we can see we did break above this trend line in blue here so that is a bullish sign we're coming back down to test the top of it and quite often if we break it on the rsi first it, it does indicate that we're probably going to break it on the chart also so there is that possibility that we do just spend some time here without a drop back down again and then break the trend line but we'll have to see how that plays out and how bitcoin responds to these order blocks whether they act as support or we start closing below this clump of order blocks at 36.7 and start pushing for these lower levels do also have this gray box on the rsi here this is pretty much just marking out the 50 level and this is a key area i'm looking for the rsi to get back above to give me confidence that we're going to try to push higher on a more of a macro scale as we can see looking back in the past i've got that 50 level marked off here you can see it acted as a rejection here and also here and also here and if we look on the chart we can see it did have a rejection here pushed us back lower but once we did get above that 50 level on the rsi it did lead us to moving higher on a macro scale we also see it here on this correction we did come up to that 50 level we got rejected and we pushed lower again but once we did get above it we did start moving higher on a macro scale and same with our current situation we got rejected at that 50 level very similar to that previous consolidation at the same point we've got a similar trend line connecting the highs but we can see that rejection at the 50 level we pushed down lower but what's different in looking at this previous consolidation is actually broke the trend line on the chart but not on the rsi we did grind out the lows here we saw the rsi was all the way at an 80 reading it had to cool off one more time before getting the fuel to move higher and break that 50 level on the rsi and also that trend line this is slightly different we broke the trend line on the rsi but not the chart yet either way i think we need to cool off on the stochastic rsi and possibly make that bullish divergence before trying to break back above and try to test this 50 level on the rsi so just want to compare these two consolidations here there is a lot of similarities with this previous drop and consolidation between 30 and 40k and our current price action so just making that a bit clearer this is that previous consolidation on the left and our current price action on the right have those same trend lines on the rsi the 50 level with these blue boxes we also have in yellow the 50 day moving average the 200 day moving average in red we saw we had that death cross previously we had that death cross just recently the middle of january we had that drop down after the death cross similar to this price action then we came up to meet the trend line we did actually break it after that point but then we did grind down the lows and the other thing i'm looking for as well as this 50 level on the rsi and these trend lines is to get above the 50 day moving average and once we did tick all those boxes we can see that we moved higher on a macro scale looking at our current price action had that death cross the 50 day moving average has been coming down here it's currently at around 43,500. I do think we have to come down one more time here. If we did break this trend line, I still do think we're going to grind down one more time, like we did on this occasion, and allow that 50 day moving average to come even lower when it's quite close to the price action. Then it would be easier for Bitcoin to get above it. And once we do that and also break this 50 level on the RSI, it would give me confidence that we are going to move higher on a more macro time frame and down to the four hour time frame now we have that same falling wedge drawn in and if we just zoom in a bit here we can see we came to the top of that falling wedge we have pushed down also have this trend line just connecting the overall lows here we can see we broke below it here we did make some higher highs but we were just retesting this trend line. We got rejected from both of these trend lines and we are pushing down. Also see a lot of volume was traded here on the VPVR. And even just looking at the immediate price action, we can see the most amount of volume here at approximately 38,440. 
So this is a key area to break above and does line up with the falling wedge pattern. Looking at the stochastic RSI, we have pretty much completely come down here and cooled off. So perhaps we might see a bounce like we did on this occasion. There we go, we only corrected a little bit here before starting to go higher. There is still room on the RSI to move higher here. We're not close to this 70 line yet. There's also room to move lower. Looking at the six hour time frame, we also see the stochastic RSI still coming down. It has a few more ticks here before it gets to the bottom. The RSI is pretty much neutral here. And the 12 hour stochastic RSI is just starting to come down here. It's testing that key 80 level. I think if we have one more tick down here, this will probably cool off completely all the way back down. And it looks like that would play out that move where we do come down further down and make that bullish divergence possibly with the RSI before moving higher on the daily. But we can see if this 12 hour does keep coming down, it can flow on onto that daily time frame. And this is the daily. And then we could see that the stochastic RSI cools off on the daily also. So let's look at market cipher now. This is on the four hour time frame. We can see we did get this red dot and we have started coming down here. The blue wave is still coming down. It doesn't look to be closing off yet. And we'll have to watch that to see if we do a similar thing with this pullback. We didn't come that far down on the blue wave. The money flow is in the green though. We were in the red for quite a long time here. So these green dots on the other side are more valid now while well, the money flow is in the green. We see on the six hour similar red dot, this blue wave's coming down. It does look like it has more to go though. And the money flow is still in the red. So these red dots are more reliable on the top when the money flow's in the red. And the green dots more reliable on the bottom when the money flow's in the green. The 12 hour does have a red dot. It's not confirmed yet until the daily close, but it does look like it needs to come down for a correction also. The money flow is still in the red. It has moved up a bit here, which is a good sign, but we have been in the red ever since we dropped from around that 69K area. And the daily time frame, we're still running from this green dot back on the 25th of January. This blue wave is starting to curve here a little bit. Money flow is still deep in the red. The two day time frame also had a green dot back on the 27th of January, but this money flow is still pretty deep in the red. And the three day did get another green dot here on the 28th of January. It has been confirmed. So we are seeing these green dots build up on the one, the two and the three day time frame. And now we have seen a green dot on the four day time frame. And we'll have to wait for the 6th of February for that to be confirmed. But now we do see it on the 1, 2, 3 and 4 day time frames. But we are waiting to get it on the weekly time frame. And that's the one that will give me a lot of confidence that we're going to start moving higher on a macro level. We do see the 5 day time frame here. This blue wave is getting quite close to closing off here. So we are getting close to a green dot. The next five day candle is on the 5th of February. And also the six day time frame is starting to curve around here. The next six day candles on the 6th of February. So I do think we are getting close to a bottom here and at least a dead cat bounce. But again, I wanna see that green dot on the weekly time frame, which we are on currently. We see that previous green dot down here did indicate that we were going to start moving higher on a macro time frame. But in keeping up that comparison with the previous consolidation here between 30 and 40k after that 65k drop with our current price action from 69k and comparing it on market cipher. So just comparing those two now on the left the previous consolidation, the right our current price action on a market cipher down here, this first row is the one day time frame, then the two day, then the three day time frame, the four, the five, the six, and finally the weekly time frame on the bottom row. We're looking for these green dots here to flow on from each other, from the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and finally that weekly green dot to give us confidence that we are going to move higher on a macro time frame. We can see with our current price action, on the previous occasions here, 
we did get green dots on the one, two, three, and four day time frame. And that was after this recovery from this initial drop. But then we did have one more drop down here and it did negate all those green dots. We didn't lead to a weekly green dot. Then we had green dots on the one, the two, and the three day time frame around this area. Then we had another drop down. And now again in this current area, we have the green dots on the one, two, three, and four day time frame. But as mentioned previously, we want to see it on the weekly time frame. We are quite close on the five day. So we'll have to see on those next candles on the five and the six day if we do get those green dots. And again, looking at the previous consolidation, we can see we had the green dots all the way up to the five day. And then we had it all the way up to the six day. But we still went lower, tested the lows. And it wasn't until we got that weekly green dot that we were confident that we were going to move higher on a macro time scale. So it could take one or two more weeks. But we'll just keep watching these charts, let it play out. Look for those other key signs on the daily time frame with that 50 level on the RSI, the 50 day moving average, trying to get back above that and all of those trend lines. And I think by the time we do those things, we'll possibly see the green dot on the weekly time frame. But there's no need to rush into a long trade. We'll let it play out. If we do see that bullish divergence on the daily where we come down here and make a lower low compared to the previous low at 35,000, but make a higher low on the RSI, giving us that bullish divergence, then I would enter a long trade after that bullish divergence. So I do think we are going to break this falling wedge to the upside. And putting in orders down here, you can have a pretty clear stop loss below the bottom of the falling wedge pattern. So I think that's about all. Hope you enjoyed that analysis. Thanks for watching. I'm Bitcoin Mamo. I'll see you next time. Bye.